they want to capture in notes. I know Han, I did not get your first question. Um, so if you want to put that in there, uh, that would be awesome. And, right. and Han, yeah, and Han, I know you pinged me um, and we were chatting a little bit about this. Please, please, please put your comments on it because it, it sounds like y'all are, y'all are hurting. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we track our stuff. Well, Fede is going to go into it in the Word doc. All right. And then next up, um, and then by the way, if we have, if anybody has any more questions, concerns, comments, let's just park that for the discussion. Um, but right now let's go into Fetty. Fetty is going to share uh, briefly what API machinery has been up to uh, as far as triage is concerned. Oh, I saw, I, there's somebody in the room. I see it. It's, it's already the work from home, <laughs> the work from home goodness. All right, Fetty, you're out. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can share my, uh, uh, which one it is? Okay, here it is. Uh, one second, because it says a lot of Google Chrome things. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, this is like TV. Let me close the things that I should not be sharing. And this one and this one. I think I closed all of them. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I can share too if you can, if you've got issues. You're fine. Um, yeah, let's try it. one more try. Oh, I had too many things open. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the working from home thing. Let's see if this is what I want to share. Yeah, do you see my screen? Is that the presentation? Just says. I see black. Yeah, we see black. Uh, You're probably using du a dual screens, right? Yeah. yeah. Wait, okay. Can you yep. can you present for me? I'm um, on it. Yeah. Thank you so. Much. Yeah. No worries. Sorry about that. All good. So it's All very right. simple. Um, you know, I just put together a couple of slides. Um, I don't think we have a perfect process, but um. Our biggest value is that we've been doing this for the last two years, and um, I think it's, uh, it's valuable. We have some lessons learned and uh, some things to share. So uh, a little bit of history, 2018, um, internally at Google, we realized that you know there was a large amount of pull requests and issues coming and labeling CAPA machinery, and we needed something to keep up to them. Um, you know, if we, when we were not doing this, what we get is, you know, random people pinging you, uh, hey, can you review my pull request? Hey, you know, I opened this issue two months ago, nobody's paying attention, you know, can, can you assign somebody or can we discuss in the next SIG meeting, etc. cetera. Um, sometimes it bubbled up into the SIG meetings, which is okay, but usually the SIG meetings are happen every two weeks and, um, and also, um, they are not the right place um, to get into, you know, if you have 40 or 80, as we have some weeks, uh, pull requests, you cannot go through them in those meetings. So we started uh, with the simple idea of getting together uh, twice a week. Um, yes, I can give access later to the deck. Um, twice a week, 30 minutes, uh, sometimes uh, you need more, but we don't go over time, but sometimes you need less. Um, we started doing that internally and we realized that this was a huge value for Google. Uh, so then last year we opened it. Um, so basically what we do is, I cannot share my screen, so I cannot do it live, but you know, we have two, two very, and please don't laugh. And I think uh, having the cap and having a process uh, is going to be great because I will tell you what we do. So we have a very simple query, uh, like you can open one of those, like the PRs queries if you want. Um, so everything that is an issue and is open, uh, sorry, it's not open, I will explain later, and is labeling API machinery. So we track, um, let's say that last week or last meeting, we uh, were able to go up to, I don't know, one of the ones that are at the bottom, 88966. So we track that number, and then we go through all the ones that are new since last meeting, okay? Um, can we go back to the slide? Thank you. So um, we go through every single one of the pull requests uh, on the list since last 
meeting and also uh, through every single one of the issues. Um, we read through uh, the details. Um, sometimes it requires more attention, like we need to um, see what files are changing, what is the change. You will get, I'm sure everybody here is familiar, depending on uh, you know, if the person is somebody new or um, everybody has a different style. Some people put more details, it's super clear what they are trying to do. Sometimes you need to decipher what they are trying to do. Um, so this is what David was saying. Um, first of all, I think we determine if that is SIG API machinery or not. Uh, sometimes it is API machinery and it's also other SIGs, so we might uh, label other SIGs too, uh, hoping that that will bring it to their attention. Sometimes uh, we, uh, because API machinery is in a, it's in a special place in the code, um, there is a lot of uh, files that, you know, are in our folders but are not necessarily API machinery. So sometimes we get tagged uh, into pull requests that are not necessarily us, so we might untag ourselves to make it clear that we are not paying attention to that. And you know, because this is a community, if anybody feels that uh, it's wrong to untag it, you know, the conversation is open, can tag us back, and we will take a look. Um, usually, uh, one of the two TLs of the C is present in these meetings. Uh, so Tuesdays, uh, we have David, Thursday, uh, we have Daniel, and then there is a lot of other random people from the C, uh, not only from Google, you know, from different companies and from the open source in general that participate. Um, what we uh, have developed, I think it's a little bit informal, but um, everybody has kind of a sense of who is a good person to look at something, you know, depending on the area. Um, so what in the end, we want to make sure that, you know, we uh, either CC people to make them aware or assign it to people so they can take care of uh, the issue. Um, uh, I want to say the last two things, um, three and four, um, we use this opportunity to um, you know, tag some issues as help needed or a good first issue. I don't remember the exact wording, but um, we do that. Um, the other detail is uh, we skip cherry picks. We skip the ones that are close. Uh, we get a lot of traffic usually in API machinery, so we, you know, we try to optimize for that. Um, and number four is, um, um, since you know, I've been more involved in API machinery and I become the chair, some people come and say, you know, hey, what can I do uh, to participate more on the SIG? Where can I start? I always suggest, you know, come join these meetings, uh, just you know, sit there, listen, learn. If you feel like there is something, an issue or a PR that sounds interesting to you, you know, speak up or send me a message, I will uh, you know, see you on that one, you, will, you can see the progress, you can use it as an opportunity to learn. Uh, and the last slide, yeah, what else? Um, so I think the biggest lesson learned, um, and I hope that Han and uh, David would agree, is that uh, we make it regularly and consistently. Um, there are weeks when we are getting closer to code freeze, uh, where it gets crazy, we get like, you know, two full pages of pull requests, which is like, you know, a hundred pull requests in two days or something like that. Um, there is no way that we can have a large, you know, three hour meeting to go through that like every week would be great, right? So consistency and uh, regularity, um, I think um, pays off, um, that's great. Um, those are our numbers. Um, we could be doing better. I suspect a lot of those issues are issues that, you know, are there, uh, since before we started this, this entire process two years ago. So, um, yeah, this is one of the things that I am interested in into exploring, maybe as part of this gap or, you know, uh, this discussion, which is how do we go back in time and do archaeology on things that you know, are timing out uh, three, three years old or stuff like that. Um, the other thing that I think the gap is great because um, um, Today is really hard to query, and that's why we are keeping, you know, in a in a shared document the number of the last one we triage on the previous meeting, so we can, you know, follow through that. Um, we meet twice a week. Um, yeah, that is our playlist at YouTube. Um, 
we sometimes don't record it. My fault. I know Paris has been asking me to record it every time. Uh, but we recorded the last time, um, last Thursday. So if you are curious, uh, you can take a look at that. It's like, you know, 13 minutes. Um, yeah, that's what I have. Did I miss anything, Han, David? I shared, I shared the, the pointer doc that we use for ah, the, okay. oh, the API machinery. Thank you. Triage, yeah. Uh, it's it's in the Zoom link, so. Is this it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that is how we keep track of the numbers. Uh, it's the best that we can find. Uh, you also don't want to do it super sophisticated. Um, you know, we look at GitHub and the tools they provide. Um, we, uh, I had somebody on my team some time ago, like two years ago, also build an application to see how much we were assigning to people to avoid overloading people. I don't know. I think we want to keep it lightweight and simple. Um, if anybody is getting too much because, you know, the person that is running the meeting uh, doesn't realize, can speak up, uh, you know, it's, it's very informal, uh, but it's consistent. Um, you brought up a great question that I am documenting right now, which is how do you deal with issues and PRs that are several years old? Old slash stale slash not stuff you're familiar with. Yeah, that, that's, that's a shortcoming of our system because we only keep a pointer to the most recent thing that we've swept through. Yep. So our system does not allow us to sweep through the same thing twice. Which is why we would love that functionality from the, the triage cap. Stephen, did you you have your listening ears on on that one? <laughs> what? No, no. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, I got you. All right. Okay. Um, questions, concerns, comments for either FETI or API machinery triage. And everybody is welcome to come uh, and you know participate. Even just to listen and see if you know you like it, you want to give us feedback. What's one thing you tried that didn't work? Um, I think um, trying too hard to keep track of uh, who was supposed to do what, you know, what was assigned to everybody, uh, and did they do what they said they were going to do? Um, um, it's it's impossible. It's too much. I mean, for the big initiatives, it is. We are doing that, but you know, with the amount of traffic that we get, it's impossible. So I rely a lot on people, basically, which is what we do here in open source, right? Um, uh, being responsible and you know, coming back to us uh, if they feel that they can't do any of the things we ask them to do, um, or they need help or something like that. That's a good one. Anybody else? Um, I, I really like the idea of uh, triage teams um, or having triage events. I, I think that um, I was kind of failing to see it until chatting on this call, but like release has a set of different triage teams, right? So bug triage, the enhancements team, um, all these people that are um, doing, I mean, it, it's, it's a lot of it is doing work so that the leads don't have to, right? And that has worked out pretty well for us, at least, I mean, you know, we have these, uh, we have it in place for essentially the quarter, right? So every milestone gets a new set of people. So I'm um, trying to figure out how to better share that knowledge across milestones. Um, because the, the, like the, the body of, I mean, the body of understanding that you build up while learning how to do triage for, for the enhancements or for, or for bugs or for failing tests um is it, you know I, I think is globally useful right not just a release but everywhere right so just just rambling <laughs> to connect with that one uh this is the space like you know our uh, api machinery triage uh, meeting is the space where we get um you know a failing tests and the things that you know come from the release team uh, when they are failing Oh. That's a good, um, that's something good to document too, is like a, 
a value add. Um, all right. Well, now we are at the discussion phase of our journey. Uh, we can stop recording. I kind of don't want to stop recording, so I do want to ask some poignant questions to y'all um, that I think others might take value in. Um, but on the same topic of triage, you know, same questions for you that I asked Fetty, like what if, what if your groups tried that didn't work? What is, what are some things that do work for your groups? Um, anything that you want to share with your crew or maybe other open-ended questions like Fetty's question, hey, how do you deal with issues in PRs that are several years old? Does anybody want to go first? I guess I was going to ask the, the question, maybe it's an open-ended question, like how do you, how do you come to consensus on won't fix? Um, we're like, this is just too old to be relevant now, or we just don't have, you know, we're not, we're not going to get to it. Um, versus the, maybe the, I feel like there may be a lot of issues that remain open because we often use a much softer like, yeah, I mean, I guess that would be cool if you want to do it. Um, but the amount of people who swing by and, and pick things up is a little low. Um, so I've been, I've got sorry, some, go for it, go for it. Yeah. I, was, uh, I was just gonna say, I have something to say, but I will not say it on the recording. Okay, we, we can maybe go off recording for this, yeah. but just one other example I'll give is I feel like there are often issues I see that um, periodically age into life cycle stale and then get refreshed uh, perpetually. Uh, and so I take that as a signal that like somebody cares that it stay open, but nobody cares enough to actually do anything about it. And I feel like eventually that begins to accumulate a lot of cruft. And I'm not like, like Fatty, I'm not entirely sure what to do with it because maybe sometimes these document like known deficiencies um, that would be nice to fix, but they're just, they're so low priority that um, the history speaks for itself that nobody has uh, decided it's high priority enough to do anything about. Uh, No, you go for it. <laughs> uh, well, I was just going to say, um, I don't have a silver bullet for that. Um, I, I am fortunate to be uh, surrounded in the SIG with um, very good people. Um, they are very practical. And I think we don't keep things open. Just them open and be nice. uh, we can still be nice and have a discussion in the SIG meeting uh, about um, a proposal and, you know, decide as a SIG if we want to move forward or not um, and see, you know, give people the opportunity. We had a lot of those, you know, uh, sometimes in the triage meetings, um, there is an issue that is a little bit controversial or, you know, it's divided the opinions. So maybe that one is worth uh, to ask the author to, you know, put a slot in the agenda of the SIG meeting, come in, uh, let's discuss it and let's see what we can do. Um, and, you know, that's that's my take there. Um, I, I would not just keep things open. Um, uh, we still have the labels, you know, um, low priority, long term roadmap, and, and stuff like that. But uh, uh, yeah, virtually. Yeah. Also, th this concern really pertains mostly to to issues and not uh, PRs. Um, and the vast majority of the things that we do in our bug scrub is uh, triage PRs. That, that tends to be numerically the most significant part of our triage process. I mean, this might not be the same for all SIGs, but for APM machinery, it tends to be very PR heavy. 